Amen. Good to see all of you here today. Have a seat, please, in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for your testimonies. I mean, it was powerful this morning, some really good things. And uh, God is good, praise the Lord. So appreciate you all being here. Great to see you. And all of you on Facebook and online, and we just love your being a part of the service. And you certainly are, whether you're here physically. We know we already talked about it this morning. The church is not this building. It's where the church gathers. Amen. And the church is everywhere, and we can all connect as a result of that. Uh, amen. Being one in the Lord. So thank yes. everybody for sharing your testimonies and uh, prayer requests. Give God the glory, amen, for what he's doing in all these situations. Yes, Praise yes. God. So you, it's God. exciting. And again, as always, Tim, I appreciate you, yes. uh, your sensitivity to the spirit. And it's, again, all the things that are being said are right on to what God has laid on my heart to share with you this morning. Right. And so... Suzanne, and uh, we just appreciate you and yes. Michael, all you're doing. Uh, so many yes. things that we yes. people aren't aware of that they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And so I, I appreciate it so much. It's a, a huge benefit to all of us, and certainly yes. for me personally it is. Uh, it just saves a lot of stuff that I'm not having to do because I can't. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but they can because they know it, what they're doing. Amen. And uh, so that's, that's great. And uh, Jody, thanks for... You and Suzanne leading us in worship this morning. Great. Praise the Lord. And we appreciate that as well. Praise God. God is great. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What do you call a crazy female deer? Weirdo. How about a crazy crow? A raven maniac. You know, I've lived a number of years and I've discovered... It takes a lot of money to live in a free country. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> For you ladies, you know, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you some inside information here this morning. Buying perfume is just simply changing dollars for cents. <laughs> okay, good. There was a big debate yesterday about what people were wearing to the wedding. Uh, it's never a big debate for me. I was going to wear shorts, but then it seemed a little bit chilly. I was afraid we'd get inside and I'd freeze, so I ended up wearing jeans, as did probably half the rest of the people that were there. It was, a, you know, like always they are. Uh, but I had an interesting experience. I went to Ancestry.com, and I traced my genealogy all the way back to Levi Strauss. <laughs> Okay, that, that really wasn't too bad today, to, you know, all things considered, and obviously it's all relative, but. That's it. Don't encourage her. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I got, well, I got to listen to that too, you know. All right. Praise the Lord. God is good, and uh, I think he wants to speak to us this morning. He has already. Amen. And uh, wants to continue to do that with the, the things that have been established already through the testimonies and, and uh, Tim's preliminaries. Praise the Lord. So it's always exciting to, to know that we're in the, in the flow, I think. Right? In the flow. Praise the Lord. So let's begin with Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 1. Hebrews 3 and verse 1. <clears throat> Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Amen. Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. Revelation five, uh, 1, verses 5 and 6. And from Jesus, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Mm -hmm. And lastly, Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. Jeremiah 1, verses 5 through 10. From Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the 
first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto him and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. That's an echo of what I just said, right? So you to make sure it's established. Praise the Lord. So here in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse, beginning at verse 5, he, uh, he, the Lord speaks. He said, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Tim has quoted these scriptures this morning already, but uh, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build, and to plant. Praise the Lord. Going back in, in Hebrews uh, chapter 3, verse 1, where we read the last phrase is, it says, Jesus, high priest of our confession or profession. The words are interchangeable. Amen. And it's our confession that links us to Jesus as the high priest. Mm -hmm. So if we just believe, right. but don't make confession, you know, we'll go to heaven because you've already confessed that Jesus is Lord. That's how you got saved. And so uh, if we're just believing, but we don't make confession, right. then his high priesthood cannot operate on our behalf. It's on the basis of our spoken confession, not our unspoken faith, that Jesus operates in heaven as our high priest. Amen. Now, just take a little time because I'm going to be all over the place here probably as usual. But I'm going to try to make these things come together the way they have to me. Amen. And Jesus, so Jesus operates in heaven as our high priest. The way he operates as our high priest in heaven is by our confession. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. He, he does what we say. Amen? And so, uh, based on what the Word of God is. In, in fact, in, in, in uh, James chapter 2, it talks about, James says, uh, show me your faith without works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. Faith without works is dead. So, uh, religiously thinking, you know, we would say, okay, that means I've got to do this, and I've got to do that in order for, for God to bless me. But that isn't really the word uh, that's used there as works actually translates diligence or a teacher. So what he's saying is if faith without diligence or faith without teaching, amen, is worthless, right? So faith, just knowing something doesn't change anything. It's how you respond to what you know. It's how we react to the knowledge that God has given us, to the word that God has given us, amen? So the word confession literally means to say the same thing as. So when he says the confession of our faith, yeah. he's saying you need to be saying the same thing your high priest is saying yes. or you're not going to get the results that he has yes. promised. Amen. Yes. And so confession in this context is saying the same thing with our mouths as the word of God says in the scripture. All right. So it's making the words of our mouth agree with the word of God in faith. That's what enables Jesus to exercise his high priestly ministry as our representative in the kingdom of God. Yes. Amen. Let's look at Hebrews 4 uh, and verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Amen. Hebrews chapter 10 Verse 21 through 23. So he says, knowing that we have this high priest that's responding or listening to our words, let's hang on to what we know to be the truth. Let's say what we know to be true. Amen. Having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, that word evil conscience simply means a guilty conscience. Not not operating from your position of the righteousness of God in Christ, but seeing yourself as unrighteous. So he said, don't let that dominate. A true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts 
sprinkled, the blood of Jesus has cleansed our uh, us completely, amen, from sin, from, from yes. shame, from guilt, from all of that. There is therefore now yes. no condemnation. I heard somebody say this. Everybody say now. now. Say now again. Now. Say it again. Now. It's still now. Yes. The first time you said now was a little while ago. Yes. Right? But it's now when you say it, it's always now. And so there is therefore now, not there is none now, there was none yesterday, it's what Suzanne had shared a little bit ago. There's none in the immediately in the moment, and there won't be any tomorrow. Because it's all been covered by the blood. The sprinkling of the blood has already dealt with it. What does the high priest do? He sprinkles the blood. He, he offers the sacrifices, amen, on our behalf. He doesn't look at us, he looks at the sacrifice. It's, it is Michael Jackson. He looks in the mirror. He said it starts with me. And that's the truth. We think about how, how are we going to change the world? Look in the mirror. Yeah. The way the world gets changed is by us individually making a choice to do something, to have an impact, to make a difference, right? So having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Praise the Lord. He's faithful. Every time the Bible uh, talks about Jesus as our high priest, it says we have to maintain and hold fast the confession, faith, and hope, right? Yes. Romans 10, verses 8 through 10. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in the heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Praise the Lord. So there's a direct link between the heart and the mouth. Praise the Lord. In the New Testament, uh, the word salvation, uh, the Greek word, uh, obviously, in the New Testament is Greek. And that, if you look it up in the Strong's Concordance, it's, uh, the only way it's used in the New Testament is, the number is 4991, which means soteria. There, there's two other times it's used, and it's the same word, it's just soterion. It's uh, uh, 4992. So all, every time but twice in the New Testament, it's, it's uh Soteria, and the other two times is soterion, which is this, basically it's, it's the same word. And what that word means, what salvation literally means, the definition of it is to rescue, have safety, deliverance, health, and wholeness. It's the same translation every single time. It's the same definition every time because it's absolutely the same word. Amen. So in the Bible, salvation is the great all-inclusive word for the blessings and the provisions of God that we receive through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And it, that includes spiritual, physical, financial, temporal, yes. and eternal blessings. Yes. Amen? Now, we know that's part of our salvation. But for the most part, religion has taught us that salvation is simply just get born again and then be as good as you can possibly be and you'll go to heaven. Here, you've got to deal with everything. It's all up to you, you know, how you're going to handle it, right? So obviously, to enter into the fullness of God's salvation in every one of these areas that we just spoke of, we have to make the right confession in all those areas. Yes. I mean, just think about the different denominations who have different beliefs or different faiths or different expectations of what salvation will bring. Right. There, are, there are many people in other denominations that are born again, but they'll never experience a healing. They won't experience deliverance because they don't believe that's part of what God has already provided for them. They believe that's something they have to work out of themselves, out of their own energy, right? Mm -hmm. So when our confessions agree with the Word of God, we're moving into the full provision that God has made for us. Amen? It's, it's almost like when he says, uh, don't, don't let your lack of faith stop you from entering into the fullness of rest. In other words, into the fullness of dependence on what God has provided for us rather than what we can provide for ourselves. 
Amen. Our confession links us to Jesus. It links us to him as our high priest. And that's why what we say with our mouth determines our experience. Yes. Praise the Lord. So John, and look at this in John chapter 16, verse 13. is speaking of what Jesus is saying. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. I have to go away because if, unless I go away, I cannot send back the Holy Spirit. In other words, he says, I've got to die and be resurrected before the Holy Spirit can be poured out. So how be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. All right, so the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, and it's also the spirit of faith. Yes. Amen. And he will not lead you or guide you except by God's word. Right. Right. If, it does, if, if you feel like the Holy Spirit is moving you or leading you in a direction, it, you, I guarantee you, you'll find what he's saying to you in the word of God. Because he can't talk about anything else. He said, hey, I don't have anything to say. I'll, I can only say what God has said. Yes. Right? I, I, I'm not going to speak of myself. I'm not going to just come up with something off the top of my head. I can only tell you what he, what he has spoken. It's, it's the same as Jesus saying, I only say what my Father says. Yeah. I only do what my Father does. Well, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. So what's he going to do? The very same thing. Right? Mm -hmm. So he's given us insight into how we are supposed to operate. As spirit beings. Yep. We're, we're, we are spirit beings. We just happen to yep. live in a body, right? So we should be functioning as spirit beings rather than letting our physical body right. dictate how we yes. act or how we behave or how we live our lives, right? So again, let's, look, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 9. So he's going to lead us and guide us into all truth. There's so much here that we that we may have head knowledge of, but very little practical spiritual experience in. And that's what the Holy Spirit is trying to do. He's not just trying to give us more information. He's trying to reveal to us what God has said to us. Amen? By the Spirit. I mean, we all know this. We talk about it all the time. But we read it, and we've read it hundreds and hundreds of times, and then all of a sudden we read it one time, and we go, what in the world? How, how did I ever miss that? I'll tell you, the Holy Spirit just enlightened it to you. Yes. He just gave you revelation. He's trying to lead you into more truth, yes. right? Holy so then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Praise God. And that's God's words, all right? And that's where Jeremiah's authority came from. Amen. It wasn't Jeremiah's words. He, he said himself, look, I'm just a young guy. I don't have the knowledge to do this. I don't have the, the wherewithal, the understanding and everything. And God said, here, I, my words are in your mouth. That's all you've got to worry about. You say what I've said. You say what I say. Amen. And so uh, Jeremiah's words were God's words. Right? Jeremiah, let's, let, let's think about it this way. Uh, Eric and I had this conversation. It was about... We are citizens of heaven. We just happen to be here on earth. Mm -hmm. So that's why he, uh, Paul refers to us as ambassadors of Christ. Well, in, uh, he, 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 Jeremiah was a citizen of Judah. Okay? And as a citizen of Judah, he was subject to the government of that nation. And the, and the rulers. Yeah. Right? But God says, you're going to pull them down and you're going to set them up. Yeah. How's he going to do that? I'm putting my words in your mouth. You don't have the ability. You've got to submit. You, you're in a, in a country, and in that country, just like here in the United States, we're subject to the laws and the, the rules and the values and so on and so forth, right, of the country that we're in. But we're not of this country. We just happen to be in this country, right? And so here's the deal. He says, yes, you're a citizen there of Judah, and yes, you're responsible to subject yourself or submit yourself to the laws and the demands of that nation, and so it's, it is with us. But he said, yet in the spirit realm, you exercise authority over every one of those rulers mm -hmm. that are dictating to you how you're supposed to live your life. Yeah. That's the conflict that we find ourselves in in this nation and I suppose in many others, but especially in this one because it has its positives, but it also obviously has its negatives. Yeah. So we're subject to laws, and some of those laws we may not agree with. Right. In fact, I could name a, yeah. Quite a few right off the top of my head. But my point is this. I'm subject to those laws. And as a citizen, I have to submit to those laws. But as a citizen of heaven, 
I can speak to those laws and I can do something to change them. I can speak to the environment. I can speak to the governments. I can yes. speak to the nations, amen, yes. and have an impact. That's what he was saying to Jeremiah. Then I, and we could all say, yeah, but hey, I'm just this one guy, you know, and look, yep. I'm putting, this not you that's going to do this. I'm putting my words in yes. your mouth. I knew you when you were formed in yes. the belly of your mother. I knew yes. what you were going to be. I knew your limitations, and yet I have chosen you yes. to be a vessel of honor. I've chosen you to rule, yes. amen, over the, the true yes. rulership, yes. principalities, powers, evil, wickedness, whatever it is yes. in high places. Right. Amen. Yes. Everything here is just a, a reflection of that. Praise the Lord. And so Jeremiah's career, it illustrates a principle that is completely or more fully revealed, as most things are, in the New Testament, under the New Covenant. And so every Christian has dual citizenship, right? We are, by natural birth, we are citizens, those of us that are here are citizens of the United States. So that's where we live physically. That's where we have to submit to their laws and the laws, and so on and so forth. But spiritually, we were born again. We were born from above. That's our citizenship, amen, is in heaven. And through faith in Christ, we are citizens of God's heavenly kingdom. Amen. So look at Philippians chapter 3 now in verse 20. And again, the translation is what's so important here because he said, for our conversation is in heaven. Or you could say, the language we speak is heaven. Yeah. Because that's where we're really from. Right? right? I mean, there are, there are immigrants and others who come to the United States. They don't speak English. Mm-hmm. What do they speak? Their, their, their conversation is still of Mexico or Japan or Germany or China, wherever it might be, right? That's their conversation. The truth is that word literally translates our citizenship is in heaven. Mm-hmm. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So though we live in the earth, our citizenship is in heaven. We're just here as representatives or ambassadors for Jesus. And how many of you know, wherever the embassy is, is the same as that nation. I'm the ambassador. I'm the embassy of heaven. So wherever I go, heaven goes. It's just like what God was saying to Abraham. Every place you set your foot belongs to you. It's yours. But you have to take it, right? You have to do it. You can't just meander around without awareness of the authority that you have. And that's the reason for the testimonies we've heard here this morning, for the, for the dreams that God gave, Ab- yes. or gave to Eric. It's, it's an awakening. It's a try to stir us up and get us to understand, look, you're way more than you realize you are. Yes, in the world you may just be another guy or another woman or, and you, you got this job or you got this family or whatever. That's true. But that is just a, 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 a small part of what you really are. What you really are is this ambassador of God. You are this representative of heaven on this earth. Yes. And without, us, with, without knowing that, we'll, we'll just stumble through life. We'll never have the impact that we're supposed to have. We could still be good people. We could still have some positive influence, but not the kind of influence that God's wanting us to to have and for this world to experience. Amen? And so our citizenship is in heaven. Our position in the kingdom of God is determined by our relationship to Jesus. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 through 6. And see what, just see what God is trying to show us. It's amazing. I mean, it just blows my mind. But, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. Yes. Amen? So God's grace identifies us with Christ in three successive uh, phrases here that he uses. First, we are brought to life or we're made alive. Mm -hmm. Amen. We share Christ's life. Mm -hmm. We're buried with him. We're raised again with him, right? So we share the life of Jesus. Second, we are raised up as Christ was raised from the dead. Amen. From the tomb. We share in that resurrection power, in that resurrection life. What raised him? The Spirit of God. Amen. So number three, we are enthroned. 
in the heavenly kingdom, praise the Lord, we share Christ's kingly authority on the throne. Yeah. We're seated with him. That, he's telling us, you've got authority here. You have authority on the throne. Not in here. From there, that's the dominant one. That's the dominant uh, uh, power, right? This here is all shadows yep. in comparison. So he said, even though you may be subject to rules and regulations and laws on earth, you are seated on the yes. throne of everything, of eternity, of all that there is. Yes. And you have to operate from that reality. Amen. So in the heavenly kingdom, we share in this authority. Amen. And none of this is is future. It's all past tense. It isn't something we're waiting to have happen. It has already taken place. Yes. Amen. It's already a reality. It started, amen, in past tense. A fact already accomplished. Yes. Praise the Lord. See, that's where we foul up with religion. Religions, they may agree with some of this, uh, you know, the, the thesis, but the problem is how we achieve it is a whole other ballgame. They're saying we got to do this. Yep. It isn't what we do. It's what we believe. It's what we know to be true. And how we respond to it. So each of those three uh, phrases I used is made possible. But it's made possible not by our effort. It's not by our merit. But solely by accepting our union or our oneness with Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. So let's look at Ephesians 1 verse 17 through 20. And what I'm saying is, and I don't want to you know, wear Eric out with this, but it just... It, it really got to me. That's what, that's what God is saying to Eric in his dreams. It's not, by you, it's not what you do. It's just that you're there to do it. It's that you make yourself available. You don't have to have all the answers. He's, he's, you know, he's in Las Vegas thinking, what the heck am I doing in Las Vegas? I don't want to gamble. I'm not looking for a prostitute. I don't really want to get high. And I want to get a hold of Rita and let her know, you know, come on, I'm trying, I want to keep connected here. And yet he finds out, why is he there? Because that, it represents sin. I mean, we call it Sin City, right? And I'm not saying everything about Vegas is bad, but I'm just saying that's the symbol, symbolism of it here. And the symbolism was that this is a bad place. And I need somebody to represent me in that place. And all you got to do is be willing to let the Spirit flow, to just be willing to let what God has done naturally in you to ha have an impact supernaturally in the lives of the people that are around you. Praise the Lord. So he says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. That revelation there is a powerful thing because there's a lot of stuff that we know but it hasn't really become revelation to us yet. Even though we share it all the time and talk about it, it isn't revelation until it becomes experiential, until we actually begin to operate in it, right? So he said, May give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, amen, or the eyes of your spirit, amen, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, word, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. That revelation, amen, it, it can't come by natural reasoning. You're not going to get it just by reading the Bible. Not alone by reading the Bible, amen. It doesn't come by sense knowledge. It doesn't come by intellect. It only comes by the Holy Spirit. Yes. No enlightened person would accept the foolishness that we hear being spoken as though it were biblical truth. They'll read some words and then they just give their own flip on it and we think, what in the world? Where did they get that? Where did that come from? Yeah. I mean, if it's something you have revelation about and they're just sharing information. They, they never match. They, they, they may sound the same, but they don't have the same impact. Amen. So when he enlightens the eyes of our hearts and shows us things, here he talks about, he shows us two truths. When, when the Holy Spirit comes in and, 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 and quickens us or enlightens us or gives us revelation, amen, he does that with two different truths. And the first one is Christ's authority is supreme over the universe. It's the final word. Amen. And second... That same power that raised Jesus to that position of authority 
now works in us who believe. All power is given unto me, therefore, go. Amen? And so in our union with Christ, we share his glory. Praise the Lord. Amen? Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 20 again. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Now, if there's a question about that, all you have to do is then go to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6. So we say, wow, Jesus is seated at the right hand in heavenly places. Well, we know he is the one that's seated on the throne. He's, when it talks about the right hand, it just means power. That's the, the yes. one that wields the sword, right? So when it says he's seated at the right hand of God, it's saying he's the one on the throne, and he has all power now, yes. right? He's just, he's just echoing what he said before he left earth. All power is given unto me. Amen? And because of that, you go, and you can do this, right? So he hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We're seated there. And it's not something that's going to happen when we die. We're already there. We are spiritually, we're there right now. Amen? So we can see that through the Spirit of God, the kingdom of Christ and our place in it. By the Spirit of God, He's showing us who, where, who we are in Christ and where, what our position is. Yeah. Amen? Seated with Him on a throne. Now, if uh, sometimes our position on the throne seems a little vague or a little unreal, like when you're going through stupid, you know, It's only because we have the revelation. It's not that it isn't true. It isn't that it's some manipulation that God uses to try to get us to do something. No, it's just simply we don't have a revelation of that. We have some knowledge. We have some understanding. But if we had a real revelation of this, we would be moving differently. I think this goes to what Don was talking about, saying it's, it's, we're not there yet. God's already there. He's already done everything he's going to do. The question is, when will, we, when will the revelation come to us as a church, as individuals, to where we can actually flow in this? And church, I'm telling you, that's where we're, that's, this is the day that we're living in. That's what's happening. That's what, a lot of this stuff that the enemy meant for evil is just simply pressure to force us into the reality that God has already declared us to be. I mean, I believe that. I just believe it. And I believe that's why we're seeing more and more of the Spirit manifesting itself. In the preliminaries and in other part, in other ways, you know, kids come over and poof, oh, man, they get the Holy Ghost. I mean, there was a time when you could, you could, you could beat them with a, you know, with a whip, and they wouldn't accept Christ. You know, they're just they're, why? Because the Spirit is moving, and people are being drawn, and we have to be sensitive to that and, and understand, Amen, that we're that we're are in, a, in a position where God is really wanting to use us, Amen. So without revelation. We can't understand, we can't enjoy the benefits of our heavenly citizenship. If we don't recognize that that's our true identity, that's our true position, then, we don't get, then we're going get, to get the benefits of it. We're not going to get the, the results of what God has pr- uh, provided for us. Amen? And the result is, instead of reigning as kings, we find ourselves still working as slaves. That's right. It's like the prodigal. He was the father's son, but he was, he was working not even as a servant. He was working like a slave. Yeah. Amen? God's purpose in our redemption reflects the original purpose of God when man fell. What did he say? From now on, you're going to make it by the sweat of your brow. You're going to have to do it. You're going to have to work. You're going to have to do everything. And that was true for all of mankind until Jesus showed up. Yes. Amen? Amen? We're not under the same no. conditions. We're not under the same demands or the same situations. Amen. Amen. Jesus came, amen, so that God's grace would lift us from a position of slavery and restore us to the yes. position of dominion. Yes. yes. Instead of by the sweat of our brow, amen, it's now resting in Jesus. Yes. Trusting in what God has already accomplished for us. Amen. So look at 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. Remember, Jesus is the high priest. We're raised up a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. What are those spiritual sacrifices? 
we apply the blood of Jesus yes. to the individuals who are lost, yes. who are being drawn to him. That's our ministry. Yes. Right? Be, you've been reconciled. Be ye therefore reconcilers. Yes. We have the ministry. We've received the ministry of reconciliation to bring people back to God. And the only way you can do that is by the blood of Jesus. That's why he makes us priests. Although he's the high priest, we are priests that can still minister at the altar. We can still bring people to Christ. Amen? And so, again, God's purpose is presented not as something that's yet to take place, not as something that's going to happen somewhere out there in the future, but has, in fact, already accomplished. It's already been done. Amen? Through our position in Jesus. Yeah. Amen? So how does Christ exercise his kingly authority? Right? We're, we're kings and priests. Yeah. We're seated with him on the throne. We have kingdom authority. Right? Yeah. So how does Jesus exercise his kingly authority? Look at Psalms chapter 110, verse 2. David had some tremendous insight into the new covenant before it ever existed. He understood grace. He understood the mercy and the love of God. And, and that's why he was a man after God's own heart. He understood the true nature of God. What God's purposes and desires really were was to be a blessing, to, be a whole, to bring wholeness and health and deliverance to people rather than to punish them and you know, hurt them. Right. So the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Look at this again. Yes. The Lord shall send thy rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. That's the situation in the world today, folks. That's exactly where we are today. Yeah. Amen. The enemies of Christ. Yeah. Now, here's the contradiction that we always struggle with. All things have been put under his feet, yet not all things are under his feet. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's kind of the terminology that's used. And so we go, what? Is it or isn't it? Well, yes, the enemy is defeated. Once and for all, Jesus has stripped him of his authority and his power. But we have to do the same thing. Yes. Because he hasn't been cast into the pit, right? He's still, he's still roaming around. Jesus has defeated him. Now it's a question of whether or not we reinforce or yes. enforce that defeat. Yes. Right? Because we're seated there with all this authority, and physically we're here just as, just as Jesus was. He never left heaven, but yet he was here physically yes. on earth, yes. right? And so here we have uh, the enemies of Christ have been defeated but not fully in this realm mm -hmm. right and so they still actively oppose his rule and his kingdom mm -hmm. but Christ has been exalted and given authority over them all so now he rules in the midst of his enemies yes. 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 praise the Lord yes. David said the rod of thy strength it's by that Christ rules. Yes. So in the scripture, the rod is a mark of a ruler's authority. You think about Moses, what did God say? Stretch out your rod. What? He stretched out the rod and plagues came on Egypt, one right after another, right? He stretched out his rod and the Red Sea opened yeah. up and they passed through on dry ground. And as high priest and head over the tribe of Levi, Aaron also, the scripture says, had a rod with his name inscribed in it. And the same applies to Jesus. We have been given his name. We, you know, I, we've talked about this before. Yes, we say in Jesus' name. But God said we, we have his name. We're identified by that name. It isn't just that we repeat that name. It's the fact that we are one with Jesus that we have his name. We're so one with him that we have the same name. Praise the Lord. And that's how God re, re, responds and reacts and interacts with us. Amen. So, with Jesus, it's the same way. His authority is made effective by the use of his name. We are the carriers of his name. We're the only ones that can use it, right? So, in the picture that David shows us here, the rod isn't stretched forth by Jesus himself, not by the man Jesus, or, right? But it's sent forth out of Zion. Now, that's fascinating, yes. because then he wants us to know, well, where is that coming from? Look at Hebrews chapter 12. And we'll read verses 22 through 28. And I'm saying, we're living in a time, there'll be, not only is there, uh, has uh, knowledge increased, but revelation 
will as well. If, I guarantee if knowledge, if things are happening here in the natural world, there's something greater yes. happening in the spirit realm. Yes. So if knowledge is increasing the way it has here on earth to the point where I can't keep up. In fact, I don't even try anymore. I'm more interested in the revelation that God has for us yes. that will overcome whatever knowledge there may be on this planet. Praise the Lord. So you are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. Now he's talking about the true believers, the people that are born again. The heavenly Jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn. That would be us, say praise the Lord. We're the church. Amen. Which are written in heaven and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. That's us. And to Jesus, the mediator or the high priest, amen, of the new covenant. And to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Though whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifies the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. So what he's saying is the natural will get shook all the time, but that which is spiritual is steadfast. Yeah. It does not get shaken. It's, it remains. Yes. This body will get sick someday maybe. I don't know. Maybe it'll, it'll get, grow old and, and die maybe if Jesus doesn't come back first. But not me. I'm not shaken. I'm, I'm not moved. I am established on the throne with God in heaven. Amen. And I am his ambassador here on the earth. Yes. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, yes. let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. How's that? By the revelation of his word. Yes. By not, not altering the profession of our faith in that high priest. By making the confession in agreement with Him. Yes. Praise the Lord. By right of our heavenly citizenship, we are in this assembly that is gathered in Zion. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So as kings, we rule with Him. As priests, we share His ministry. Yeah. All right. Psalms 110, verse 2 again. So we rule, or we, the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. That's us. Right? Zion isn't the place anymore. It's, it's us. It's right. the church. Right. So the Lord is going to send forth this rod, and he's going to do it out of his people, out of his believers. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Yeah. <coughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. Oh. See, evil is rampant. It's everywhere. In all kinds of forms and, and fashions and different ways, amen. And it, it's rejecting the authority of Christ. Whether they know it or not, that's exactly what's taking place, amen. The work of his kingdom is being denied or, or being rejected. But in the midst, we, kings and priests, and out of that assembly, out of that body, out of that church, amen, the rod of Christ's authority is exercised in his name. Oh, yes. It's sent forth through our confession yes. and through our faith. Yes. Look, I'm telling you, this, there's going to be a big change. There's going to be some changes made, I guarantee you. And it's going to happen by revelation of the church coming into its own, realizing who it is, what it is, and the authority and the power that it has right here. Praise the Lord. That's why we have to be open to the Holy Spirit. Because believe me, He's not wanting us to be ignorant of His ways. He's not wanting us to not have revelation. He's wanting it. That's what He wants us to have is revelation. Not just more information. Not just more religious rituals to go through. But the authority that we carry. Amen. Because of the influence it can have. Yes. Praise the Lord. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close here. Every direction... That the rod is extended. The forces of evil are forced to yield. And Christ is exalted. And the kingdom is advanced. Yes. It's, it's a part of the every knee is going to bow. Yes. And every tongue is going to confess. Amen. That the name of Jesus is above yes. everything. Amen. That the rod yes. of his power is greater than any force for evil that could come against it. Christ rules. Even now. Right now. In the midst of his enemies. 
and we rule with him. Yes. We are seated with him in heavenly places, yes. and we are the ground forces here on earth. Yes. It's our responsibility to exercise the authority. Yes. It's our authority, and it comes to us through his name. And in the face of all the forces of evil, we demonstrate that Christ is already Lord of Lords yes. and King of Kings. Yes. Amen? We are seated with him in the right hand of God. Yes, the hand are. of power, the hand that wields the rod. Oh, praise God. Hebrews 4, we'll close with this. Hebrews 4, 9 through 16. I, I mean, I'm expecting people to wake yes. up in the middle of the night with a revelation yes, of what do. God is doing in their lives, how he's going to use them, how he's going to use yes. the situations that are going on yes. right now. Every, anybody and everybody can do it. Yes. I believe there will be people that will just get a vision. Yes. Amen? Just somehow it, they'll, just, they'll, they'll see it. Yep. And it becomes revelation. Yes. Others will be speaking to somebody and all of a sudden words will come out that they didn't plan. Yep. Words that they yes. didn't have already pre-thought. Just Glory. prophetic words begin to flow out of them. Glory. Yes. That's the rod that, we're, yes. that we have. That's the yes. difference that it's going to make. Amen? And God wants it more than we want it because we don't even understand part of it. And yet he's saying, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. That, again, I'm just saying, he, he, he uses specific things. But listen, young women are going to have dreams. Old men are, going to have, are also going to have visions. You know, he's just saying, everybody, every age, every ethnic group, everybody who is a believer is going to function and flow in this stuff. Because that's the last days. That's how I'm going to bring it to pass. Amen? So, he says, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Yes. That rest is Jesus. It's coming into our identity as who we are. Because then there's no more work for us. Nope. How many of you know, Moses' only real problem was fear. Yeah. Fear of what the consequences would be. He didn't have any trouble push, holding the wand out there and seeing the results of that rod. Right. No. I mean, he didn't have to work at all. He just had to do what God had said. Just stretch forth the rod. And the plagues come. He just had to say what God had said to him. Yeah. If you don't do this, this is going to be the consequences, right? So that's, what we're, that's where we're at today. We don't have to, we don't have to you know, have, be doing all sorts of stuff. We just have to do what he says. Just, right. just believe and speak yes. what he speaks. Yes. And we'll see the plagues. We'll see the parting yes. of the Red Seas. We'll see the, the magnificence of God's glory right. and his power. Right. So... For he had, that is entered into his rest, he ceased from his own works, yes. as God did from his on the seventh day, right? After he had yes. created everything, after everything was done, yes. right? So let us labor, therefore, to enter into that same rest, because it's finished. Yes. Jesus has defeated them. We're just reinforcing it. We're just enforcing the, the, the thing that he has already accomplished. So lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick. It's powerful. It's alive. Yes. It's powerful. It's sharper. It has more impact, more effectiveness in people's lives than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, between the intellect and the spiritual, right? Even to the dividing soul and spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Praise God. Fifteen. Oh, I'm sorry. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, right? For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. What was Jesus tempted to do? What was he tempted to think? Something other than God had thought. Something other than God had done. Believe me, he was tempted because the devil told him, do this, do that. He said, no, whoa, whoa wait. We don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So we're tempted the same way Jesus was tempted. Right? And the way we are tempted is to not use the authority that we have. To submit to natural ways of doing things and expecting spiritual results. Praise the Lord. So, let, like as we are yet without sin, let us therefore, because of that, let us come boldly to the throne of grace where we sit... Not, not looking for a handout, but recognizing who we are and what our position really is. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we have may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Yes. Praise the Lord. You know, we read that and we think, oh, I'm going to beg God. 
And I can go and beg him freely because of grace. No, he's saying, recognize. When you're, if you're coming to the throne of grace, you're just coming to you. You're coming to your reality. You're coming to who you really are. Yes. So that you can function the way you were intended to function. Yes. Praise the Lord. His word in our mouth. Yes. His rod in our hand. Yes. Yeah. And that's victory, church. That is. that is victory over all of the enemies yes. that are among us in our midst. Yes. Amen. It, it can look overwhelming unless we look at it from this perspective. From this perspective, they're shaking in their boots. Yeah. And the more we come to the revelation of who and what we have yeah. as uh, children of God, the greater the fear of the enemy is. That's when he flees. Amen. Yes. I, I, I'll tell you what, what, what the devil is fearful of as much or more than anything is the numbers of people oh, yeah. that are going to become children of God. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Amen. He wants to mock God. He wants to mock him yes. by mocking us. What, a, what, what greater way than to, to, to mock him or to ridicule him or to do as Jesus did, and that is uh, strip him visibly in front of everybody, his own followers. See him brought to it. The people who have rejected Jesus for years and years and years, and then all of a sudden, because of the rod, because of the people of God, moving in concert with God, those people say, wow, I need to know more. I need to know if there's anything to this truth. I need to know, is this true or isn't it true? And the devil is pulling his hair out because he's being humiliated in front of his own minions. Amen? Where, where's your power now? Where's your authority now? Stripped. You've been exposed and humiliated by God again. It's like... Jesus, uh, if Je look what Jesus did to him when he was here on earth. Imagine the devil thinking, what if all these people find out who they yeah. are? No. He knows his days are numbered. He knows his time is short he because he can sense in the spirit realm something is happening. I don't yes. know what it is. Just It's no different than when Jesus said, I'm, I'm going to yield to my father. Uh, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. The devil's thinking, we got him, we got him, we got him. But at the same time, he's thinking, man, this is, I'm not comfortable with this thing. And, and then it says later, it says, had he known, he would have never crucified the Son of Glory. No. If he knew yes. what we know, he wouldn't be messing with us right now. That's right. He'd be yes. looking for some other place to stir his crap. Yep. Amen. Right. That's what's happening. And that's what's going to happen. The day's coming. When we're out of here, when we're in our true uh, yep. nation, our true country, our true uh, civilization, amen, and the devil is going to be locked up, yep. and all he's going to be able to say is, I never amen. would have done it had I known yes. who I was messing with. Yep. Yep. Praise the Lord. Yep. We've got him. Yeah. We've got him by the neck. Yes. Amen. Now we just need to apply the pressure. Yes. Yeah. And he has to yield. He, yes. Look, we've got the name, folks. We, have, we are the name. Yes, and every are. knee's got to bow. Yes. And every tongue's yes. got to confess that Jesus yes. Christ is Lord. Yes. In heaven, on earth, and beneath it. And yes. everywhere around, praise yes. God. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Hallelujah. I just, I, I, we are so privileged yes. to have been born yes. in such a time as this. Yes. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Selected. By God. It could have been anywhere. It could have been any time. Yes. But God chose us yes. for this moment. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. There's something special about that, church. Yes. I'm telling you, God yes. wants yes. us to manifest Him. Yes. And He's going to do everything He has to do for that to come to pass. Yes, he Praise God. Take the rod yes. and the word. And whip up on the devil. Praise the Lord. Yep. We are more than conquerors yep. through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. God bless all of you. Thank you so much. Again, so grateful for your testimonies and sharing because it just makes this so much easier. Amen. To know that we're all coordinating here. That God, the Holy Spirit is working through all of us to come together in agreement with what God's yes. doing in the world today. Hallelujah. God bless y'all. Go in the power of his might. Yes. Amen. In Jesus' name. I'd be expecting...